All right, uh, it's five o'clock, so it's time to get this party started. Um, I hope that the uh, earlier start time is not too much of an inconvenience for anybody. Uh, you know, it's always a trade-off. Like some people are going to be able to watch now that it's earlier, and then other people are not going to be able to watch because it's too early. So um, that's kind of a benefit to not doing it at the same time uh, every time. And uh, I forgot to put my hat on, so you can deal with my bald head tonight. But um, but yeah, so uh, I just just for personal scheduling reasons, uh, it was uh, easier to do it a little bit earlier uh, tonight. So as everybody knows, we are going to be checking out uh, some NES black box games uh, tonight. Uh, we're limiting ourselves to NES black box games. And uh, just to give credit where credit is due, this idea came from watching a recent BitHead 1000 uh, upload. And uh, that was actually how the last week's stream uh, came about, too, because I kind of thought I wanted to do this, and then somehow in my head I was thinking, oh, it'd be cool to do just, you know, PlayStation long box games. But, uh, you know, I, I know that BitHead's not for everybody. Uh, I personally enjoy his show. And, uh, but watching that NES black box, uh, episode, I really was thinking the whole time that, uh, that was, you know, this is like one of my favorite episodes that he has uploaded in recent memory, uh, just cause it was really good. Uh, you know, it was like, he, he was saying that like he was going to try to name all the NES black box games from memory, but I mean, what he was really doing was, was just talking about his memories of, um, of the early days of the NES and talking about, uh, each one of those games. So, uh, so that was pretty cool. And, and so, like I said, that, that's the impetus behind, uh, us doing, uh, black box games tonight. I do have a few black box games that I'll show you, uh, in a minute. And then, uh, we have the EverDrive uh, for the rest of them. I only have seven black box games and, uh, I didn't bring down, uh, as I just, I, I said in the video description, uh, I didn't bring down. Super Mario Brothers, just because we already uh, talked about that game in a flashback episode, and then I forgot how much of it I played through in the episode, but it, it feels like it was quite a bit. So um, so I didn't bring that one down. So uh, before we go any further, though, I've got two, uh, well, yeah, I guess two announcements. Uh, the first one, I guess the more important one, uh, as you've seen, if you follow the show on Twitter, you already know this, or if you read the video description, uh, Classic Gaming Quarterly is now on Patreon, and uh, I promise I am not going to be annoying about Patreon. I'm not going to keep shoving it in people's faces. Uh, I'm going to mention it here. I'm probably going to mention it on the next episode of Flashback, and then whenever I do the next magazine read-through, I'm going to mention it there. And other than that, it'll there'll be a link in the video descriptions. Uh, for all my future uploads. And I mean, that's really probably about it because I don't, again, I don't want to be uh, annoying about it. But um, just quickly, I guess, to sort of explain myself, uh, not that I feel I need to, but, uh, you know, I've been pretty vocally uh, against doing Patreon for uh, for quite some time. And, uh, you know, my reasoning with that was that I, I felt like I didn't want to make the audience pay for my hobby. But, uh, you know, the the truth of it really is that this stopped being a hobby a long time ago. Uh, that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot, but, uh, but it costs a lot of money to, uh, to put on, uh, this show to do things like buy the computer I had to buy or, you know, to, to buy things like this, like I talked about last week. And, uh, you know, YouTube ad revenue is very inconsistent. And, uh, as I mentioned on, uh, on Twitter last night, they're now showing two ads in front of our videos instead of just one. And uh, that was not uh, an option that was given to us. Like, hey, do you want to show... Like, you know, when they came out with, with non-skippable ads, that was something you could you could say you wanted on your channel or not. But, uh, but they're just showing two ads, and that's just what they're doing. But, uh, you know, our revenue has not gone up. Like, I asked GameSack on Twitter, and they said they noticed the same thing. Like... YouTube is showing two ads, and now people are showing ads at the ends of their video, and we're not getting any more revenue out of that, which uh, is scary because I think it means that, you know, ad revenue, like the value of ad space on YouTube seems like it's declining, and um, and that means that the amount of money that we can expect to get as content creators is probably going to continue to decline uh, as it has. 
So, uh, you know, in order to have the money to, to keep putting the show on, you know, I, I feel like I need to take advantage of all of the revenue streams that I can. And to be honest, you know, ever since I started doing uh, these streams, you know, I and I also people can sign up to be members of the channel. Uh, people uh, do the, the super chat contributions. So, you know, there's just no reason not to do uh, Patreon. And I've had a Patreon account for for a long time because I support other channels. And so um, so I just felt like it was a good time for me to start letting people do that uh, for me. And uh, just quickly, as far as the Patreon thing goes, uh, there's only one tier or whatever it is. And, and that's I took a cue from my life in gaming with that. Uh, there's the $1 tier, and that's it. Like, if you want to contribute more, that's awesome, and thank you very much. But uh, the $1 contribution gets you everything uh, that there is. Uh, as I said on the Patreon page, uh, I'm not going to create some kind of class system where, you know, how much cool stuff you get from me is dependent upon how much money you give me. Like, you either support the show or you don't. And uh, if you don't, that's totally fine. And if you do, uh, I'm going to start posting stuff on Patreon that's going to be only for uh, for patrons. So, like, the other day, I, um, uh, well, yesterday, actually, uh, I posted a teaser trailer of the next episode of Classic Gaming Quarterly, uh, that's only available to uh, to patrons. So that's the kind of thing that you can check out. And uh, and the only other thing I'll say about that is uh, I only set one goal uh, on on the Patreon page, and that's uh, to try to reach five hundred dollars a month. And uh, that if I'm able to do that, that uh, I'll commit to uploading one episode of Let's Read every month, and that I will keep that episode completely ad free, which means that I'm not even going to put uh, like a, a Patreon spot at the beginning. Like it'll be a completely ad free, uh, let's read episode. And, uh, that's basically just trying to, uh, replace the sponsorship money. Cause I don't really want to go find a new sponsor. Uh, I just, uh, I, I would just rather not do that. So if I can, if we can get up to that goal, then, uh, then I'll do one of those episodes every month and there won't be any ads. Uh, if we don't get uh, up to that goal, uh, that doesn't mean I'm not going to keep making uh, Let's Read episodes, but I'll make them when I make them, and they're going to have ads on them. So uh, anyway, uh, I don't want to take up any more time talking about that. Uh, the other thing is I saw somebody in the chat down here says something about uh, me having a new uh, merch page or, or whatever. Uh, I, didn't, I don't know. I don't see where it went. But um, oh, yeah, I like Anne Berlin. Uh, so the other thing that I did uh, that hopefully is cool, and this is just bad timing because then I got an email today saying that... Um, the, you know, the version of Linux that runs my web server at DreamHost is being, uh, is being uploaded or uploaded, upgraded, uh, tonight. So I, last I checked, my website was down. Uh, so I don't know, um, uh, I don't, I don't know how long that's going to last, but, uh, but yeah, so what I did, you know, I've sold the, the stickers and all of that stuff for a while now, but, uh, what I ended up doing was, uh, I changed the page. I added some new stuff. Like, we still got the small stickers and the big stickers. I've mentioned the coasters before, which I don't have one here to show. But, well, there's one up there, but I don't want to reach up there and get it. But, um, uh, so we got the coasters. I got some vinyl window clings, and they got the two different postcards. But anyway, that stuff's all up on the merch page. And you can just buy that stuff individually instead of me having these weird bundles on there. And uh, it's just flat rate shipping. Uh, so it's $2 shipping within the U.S. and $3 shipping everywhere else in the world no matter how much stuff you buy. So uh, that means that probably for certain orders, I'm going to have to eat something on the shipping, but I figure it all balances out in the end. So uh, that's at cgquarterly.com slash shop cgq, which there's the there's the link down in the description, and you can go check it out. Uh, and yeah, so that's it. Uh, that That is the end of the uh, announcements portion uh, of the show. So uh, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and switch the view over. And, uh, and the first game we're going to check out tonight is uh, is pro wrestling, so which I'm not very good at. So uh, although that's the case with all of these games, um, as I always say, I'm not putting on a clinic. We're just hanging out and playing uh, some games together. So uh, I'm going to turn on the game first, and then uh, switch the view over. Now I noticed that on uh, last week's uh, stream, you know, I go back and I, I watch the archives, not the whole thing, but I go back and watch part of the archive. 
just to see how everything turned out. And, uh, and the, at least for me, the game audio was almost imperceptible. And uh, so this week I tried to set the levels before I started the stream. So hopefully this sounds good. Like to me now in my headphones, the, uh, the game audio uh, sounds too loud. But uh, based on how I set the levels, uh, it should sound good. So uh, I guess we'll find out when I go back and watch the, uh, the archive of this one. Um, and I'll, I'll check the chat real fast before we move on. Uh, Daryl gave us five bucks already. Thanks, Daryl. I appreciate it. Light pen fund. Well, I have to find a light pen for sale uh, is the problem. Uh, if I can, I will. Uh, no Chris Militia coin. Uh, that would be cool. I don't know how much it would cost to have coins minted, though. I'm guessing it would be uh, a lot. Um, aren't black box game Tengen games? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. All right. Josh has him covered. So, yeah. Uh, hey, math guy. What's up, man? Uh, Teresa says, or you can subscribe to YouTube Premium and then never see ads. Yeah, for sure. And if you subscribe to YouTube Premium, then content creators get a cut of that. So that's uh, pretty nice. Um... I think a lot of people like you started to receive revenue from sponsors as opposed to something. Yeah, I mean, I'm not worried about that. I just, I don't want to have to go find new sponsors. Uh, I, I would just rather not have to do that. So, um, how will I know about Dollar Shave Club if YouTubers don't remind me constantly? Yeah, well, it's true. That is a problem you're going to have to deal with. You may forget uh, about Dollar Shave Club. Uh, all right. Anyway, um, let's get started. So I, somebody already said be the Amazon. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I was already going to do anyway. Um, there we go. Uh, so like I said, I'm not good at this game at all. So, um, so you know. Oh, there we go. Chew on his head. Uh, but this was actually one of my favorite parts of that Bithead video is uh, when he started talking about pro wrestling. And specifically talking about how he was always the Amazon. Um, but this is not a game, like, I know this game is very well regarded, uh, as well it should be. I mean, it's a really fun game, but I will say I don't have any recollection of, of knowing anybody when I was a kid that had this game. Uh, the first time I can solidly say, uh, that I remember playing this game was, uh, and I think I've kind of told part of this story before, is, uh, oops. Uh, sometime around, like, 1998, uh, I got a flyer in the mail, uh, for Funko Land, and I had never heard of Funko Land. Ooh, knee in the face. Um, and I mean, it was just like a price list, but it had a lot of old games on it, including Nintendo games. Uh, this was right when we first got a Funko Land, uh, where I live. And, uh, me and my best friend at the time, Fabian... Uh, we're looking through that because we're thinking, hey, we should go check this place out because, you know, I had a Nintendo uh, still at that time. And um, and we were looking at the prices in there and so many of them were just like super cheap. And so we went down there and I remember that even before we went, just looking at the price list, Fabian saw uh, pro wrestling and saw that it was like two dollars or something it was like oh we have to get pro wrestling because Fabian was a big uh wrestling fan like he watched uh WWF wrestling and uh and so we ended up getting it and I remember us playing it two player and whatnot that night but like I said I had never played it before so like I didn't know uh you know any of the moves or anything like that so uh but yeah but like I said uh watching Bithead talking about it was uh was just pretty funny. I thought, there we go, we pinned that guy. So, um, so yeah, that was my first experience with pro wrestling. Um, I only had one friend growing up uh, who was into wrestling. Uh, this kid named, I, I think I've mentioned him before in the show. I want to say his name so bad uh, because he had the coolest freaking name. Like, And it's his last name that was cool. Uh, his first name was Tori, which is like not Corey, but Tori with a T, which is a cool name, but his last name is like awesome. Um, but, uh, but I don't want to give somebody's full name on the show, but, uh, he was a huge wrestling fan, uh, when we were growing up. So he kind of got me into it. I think I, before I met him, uh, I wasn't into like WWF wrestling. Like, I don't think I really knew anything, uh, about it, but, um, but he got me into that. And this would have, this would have been, I think 
the year I hung out with him was the year that WrestleMania three happened because we might have even paid like convinced my dad to pay for it and watch it on pay-per-view. I can't remember. But uh, but back then they used to release the old uh, WWF WrestleManias and, and other other programs of theirs on VHS tape. And we would rent them at the video store. Uh, I'm just scrolling through the chat here. I see that Shane says, uh, Chris, speaking of headphones, it reminded me you were looking for something with a more neutral sound. West Tone in-ear monitors. I use them on stage, and they're not crazy expensive. Yeah, so that was actually something I mentioned, uh, I I meant to bring up, but uh, I didn't want to keep talking uh, at the beginning of the stream. But but yeah, so last week I was wearing those big uh, over-the-ear cans, and and I thought that looked ridiculous. And... um, and I was trying to figure out what to do about that. And, and like I went on Amazon and I was like looking at like, you know, in-ear monitors and stuff. And that just seems like such overkill for uh, for what we're doing here. And uh, and what I have in my ears here, uh, well, it doesn't matter which way I turn. But um, I know everybody hates Bose and I, I kind of get it for most things. But uh, I really like Bose earbuds because they're really comfortable. And, uh, and actually for doing something like this, Bose is cool. Because uh, bows are really hyped in the mid range, which is good for voice. And uh, I already had these because these are what I use to listen to music when I'm like at work. Uh, so all I ended up having to do because I'm looking at like you know I forgot who it was last week. Maybe it was Tahid. Somebody was saying like oh you can get these in ear monitors for like fifty bucks, and I was like I don't really want to spend fifty bucks. And um, what I ended up just having to do was buying an adapter cable uh, because this is a TRSS cable, right? It has the little stupid. Uh, uh, remote control for for your phone or whatever. And so for whatever reason, a normal headphone extension cable wouldn't work. I couldn't plug it into the mixing board. Um, so I had to order a special TRSS extension cable, which was like $7. And, uh, and then I just have the headphone cord going down the back of my jacket so that it's not hanging out, hanging down in the front because I just don't want to look stupid. But, uh, but yeah, it was like 50 bucks for like the cheapo in-ear monitors or like at least 100 bucks for like some Shures or Audio Technicas, and and I just didn't want to, I don't even want to pay for that. So, uh, you know, we just spent uh, sixty bucks on this microphone thing, and I noticed uh, that somebody mentioned uh, the orange cable. The cable was supposed to be red. Uh, the picture on Amazon was red, but yeah, this is kind of orange. The reason I got it is you can see right here it has a right angle, uh, because last week on the stream I had a regular XLR cable that was coming down like this and going back up. And I bumped it a couple of times. And, um, you know, that makes a unpleasant noise on the stream, but also was just getting in the way. But uh, I could have gotten a black one, but I just thought a red one kind of looked cool. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, um, so I'm just going to keep uh, scrolling down here real quick. Who remembers the Bobby Heenan show? I don't remember watching that, but uh, yeah, Bobby the Brain was cool. Um, or Jimmy Hart. That was back... See, I used to like... Uh, uh, wrestling was cooler back then to me because it was really like character-driven and you had all these crazy, cartoony characters. And now it just doesn't have as much personality to me. But I know a lot of people still like uh, watching WWE. So, And Derek says he was a Hulkamaniac. I was too. Uh, Andre the Giant was definitely awesome. Uh, the Iron Sheik. I follow the Iron Sheik on Twitter uh, and on Instagram. Uh, that guy's hilarious. And then uh, who didn't love Macho Man uh, Randy Savage? I remember I went. Uh, I used to go to the Seven Eleven by my house, and uh, and I would buy WWF magazine. And I remember I have I had an issue that had like Macho Man and what was her name Miss Elizabeth that he eventually married, who I think was also his wife in real life, wasn't she? I'm not positive about that, but it had them on the cover. But um, yeah, anyway, all right, I'm all caught up now. So, uh, or Teresa says that uh, Bose earbuds are good, so um, so that's good to hear. Uh, okay, anyway, um, well, we're not done playing uh, pro wrestling just yet. I just wanted to uh, pause and check out the comments real fast. Uh-oh. This is Starman, by the way, that we're fighting now, for anybody who uh, who missed that, who I'm not doing well against. There we go. I need him in the face. Uh, so this game's got a, a lot of, you know, you know, you've only got a two-button controller, but um, 
Oh man. But you know, you've got a lot of uh, moves that you can do based on like, you know, you can you can double tap and run kind of like you would with um, uh, Golden Axe or um, Streets of Rage 3. Uh, and obviously you can do like body slams. I still haven't tried to jump up on the ropes and, um, and you know, do some kind of like, I don't know what you call that, like flying, not a flying body slam. I don't know what you would call that, but, uh, that didn't work. Um, ooh, I didn't know that. If you come down without the guy there to break your fall, it hurts you, which I guess makes sense. And, um, well, I guess I'll wait until this match is over. I brought something else down here that might be of interest to some people. There we go. Chew on his head for a while. That was like one of the things Bayhead was talking about was that when he does that thing... Um, Uh-oh. I think we're about to get pinned. Oh, oh man. Barely made it. Uh, that... Uh-oh. Oh, and that's the same crowd effect, that, the crowd sound effect from uh, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Uh, anyway, when he does that, when he does that claw thing, like he stops and like shakes his head for for some reason. Really, man? Oh man, barely. Oh man, we're screwed. Ah, we lost. All right. Uh, anyway, that was a lot of fun though. Um, Starman is as elite as it gets. All right, well, I don't know about that, but if you say so. Um, George the Animal Steel was a college professor? Are you sure about that? I, I knew he was a teacher, but... Oh, no! Sorry, I didn't realize it was like... Unless... I wasn't paying attention. Was that just a rematch, or... Is this like a three-pin kind of deal? Oh, look at the blood. Line. Uh oh, that's not good. I think that was almost a pile driver. Oh, you can't climb onto the turnbuckle at the, in the front. Again, really? I feel like this game is definitely more fun than I give it credit for. Like, is he exhausted from doing the... I won, right? Because he's out of the ring? Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know if he's exhausted from doing this and has to, like, take a break or something. Um, all right. Um, Pops to Bond says, I can't remember if it was you or Bithead1000. What he's doing is he's hiding his foreign object in his tights. Uh that must have been what Bithead 1000 said. Um, but that makes sense, I suppose. Um, love the digitized voice. Yeah. Um, you said you enjoyed Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Would you stream the latest Punch Out in the series on the Wii? Uh, boy, I think I have that game, actually. You know, that would be fun. I was thinking about um, plugging in the Wii uh, one of these nights. And, uh, and and doing a stream with that, because that would also let us play some game, GameCube games. I just picked up a new GameCube game uh, this weekend that uh, would be fun to do on uh, on a stream. So, uh, so yeah, we could definitely do that. 
And uh, speaking of which, I, I don't know why I didn't mention this. So I actually just picked up uh, this pro wrestling game uh, this weekend, or well, it was on Friday, but I took Friday off. So um, there's this little store I like to go to in the Bay Area whenever we go over there. That's like a it's like a used toy store, and uh, and they sell video games. And I used to I used to find some cool stuff in there, but I think that used that place used to kind of be like a little more of a, a secret. But I think now there's enough people that know that um, that they have video games in there that uh, it gets kind of picked through. But I did find a few cool things this time. And uh, and one of them was this pro wrestling game, which was cool because I didn't have the game. And I already knew that I was going to do the black box stream. And so that was a cool game to find. Speaking of which, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but... Um, you know, I had to clean the game, obviously, and it reminded me that I keep saying I'm going to do uh, a, a quick video for this channel just showing how I clean games, uh, cartridge games, when I get them, uh, which I could have done with this game, but I actually have a game that I bought a while back that I've been kind of saving uh, to do that with. Oh, and so I was just going to say, um, I said I had a couple things here that might be of interest. I thought we might, we could read the entries in here as we play these games, so I brought down my official Nintendo Player's Guide, which, uh, what year did this come out? I remember, you know, there's somebody that keeps asking me to do a read-through of this uh, on the show, and I just don't really understand how that would work. I mean, it's a very cool book, don't get me wrong, but uh, I don't really see how I would do a read-through of it. But, um, yeah, 1987 this came out. So, yeah, it's not in immaculate condition, Josh, but it's in pretty good. It's got like a little bend in the cover here. Um, but, yeah, it's in pretty good condition. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cool book. And then the other book that I brought down, uh, just in case we need it for, um, figuring out secrets, or I mostly brought it down for this game because I wasn't sure I'd be able to figure out the special moves, is, um, my answer book for Nintendo, uh, it's the Game Counselor's Answer Book for Nintendo Game Players. And, uh, it's a pretty good, um, it's a pretty good book. It has a lot of, uh, tips in it. So, uh, oh, Mike McFly logged into the Wi-Fi at the grocery store. That's awesome, man. Um, created, Josh says the last time you used your Wii was literally as a doorstop. Wow. I find that hard to believe, Josh, only because you're so picky about the condition of your stuff. I can't believe that you would use uh, one of your consoles as a doorstop. And then Shane says ultimate muscle on the GameCube is amazing. Uh, is that the game that's based on like muscle men? Cause if it is, I actually had a conversation about that with, uh, the guy that ran the store where I found pro wrestling, uh, this week, I didn't realize, uh, that that was a thing. And so I would kind of like to check out that, uh, check out that game. And then BB Garnett said, if you have a GameCube, you should definitely check out Cubivore. Um, yeah, as you said, that game is kind of rare. That game was even rare when the, when the GameCube was still, uh, current. So, um, yeah, I'm probably not gonna be willing to, uh, drop coin on, um, on getting that one. So I don't know how much longer we want to play. Uh, well, we got to play the, we got to do against, uh, this Hulk Hogan, uh, wannabe guy here, but, uh, this is going to be the last, um, this will be the last, uh, match that we play, uh, just cause we have so many other games to get to tonight. And, uh, even though the, the stream started it at, uh, at five, my time. Uh, we, I don't, I can't really go, go too long, uh, tonight, so. Oh, we got body slammed by Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, who's totally not Hulk Hogan. I don't think he's close enough. I really want to try to jump up and, nope, he's still not going to Oh, really? Ooh, Nice! Oh, man, you can't get up on the turnbuckle and jump from the top. That would be cool. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Get up there, nope. Boom! Oh, nope, get down. Oh, now we're going to get injured. Chill out out there for a minute. Mm. 
Oh, I thought I had him. Cool. All right. Fake Hulk Hogan has gone down. All right. Anyway, um, so I'm going to turn off the Nintendo here real quick uh, so we can play a different game. Oh, I said I was going to show you which games I actually have here uh, physically. Uh, oh, thanks, Taylor. That's much appreciated. Taylor there is a longtime friend of the show. Uh, okay, so like I said, I didn't bring down uh, Super Mario Brothers. Um, Taylor's giving away the free Google money. Well, I will take all the free Google money you want to give me. Um, I didn't bring down Super Mario Brothers because we're not going to play it. Uh, I noticed somebody asked earlier, uh, I can't remember if they asked what my favorite black box game is or what the first black box game was that I ever played, but the answer would be the same, uh, and that is Super Mario Brothers. But... Um, but like I said, I didn't bring it down here. So uh, the ones I do have here, uh, I have a copy of uh, Duck Hunt, which, you know, I feel like it's it's less common to have a, a dedicated copy of Duck Hunt uh, versus having the Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt combo cartridge. But uh, I found that cheap at a store at some point. I don't know when. Uh, this is actually another game that I guess we did already uh, talk about on a flashback, but we didn't really play it very much, so uh, it would be cool to play it again. And uh, that's Excite Bike. Uh, I've got some great memories. I felt like when I was growing up, everybody had a copy of Excite Bike. Not me, but uh, seemingly everybody else. Uh, and then next one here we've got. Uh, I don't know. You know, I've just, I've never been the hugest fan of this game. I'm not saying I don't like it or I don't think it's a good game. I just, uh, I don't know. It's okay. Uh, is the original Mario brothers. And you know, with games like this, uh, these arcade classic series games, uh, there was something bit had said that I really agreed with, which is like, who is it that was really into buying these games back then? Cause you know, for me, I just really had very little interest in, uh, in getting games like this, because I wanted something I could sink my teeth into uh, more than just an arcade game. And, you know, the funny thing about that is that, and I can't remember if I talked about this on an episode of Flashback or not, but uh, one of the games I got back in the day was Donkey Kong Classics. And the only reason I got it was, is that it was two games on one cartridge, and so I felt like it was a better value but uh, I still didn't spend that much time playing it because it was just arcade games when, uh, you know, I just wanted to play something more substantial than that. Uh, you already saw Pro Wrestling, so I'm not going to... Well, I can. I mean, does anybody not know what the cartridge looks like uh, of Pro Wrestling? There it is. Pretty cool. Um, oh, and I guess, I mean, this is kind of neat, I guess, just to show. Uh, I don't know... I don't know where this... I think the guy I bought this from designed this. I'm really not positive. Somebody else will have to tell me. But my EverDrive uh, has a label that is meant to sort of evoke the styling of uh, the black box labels. Uh, two more to go here. Uh, this is a game I also talked about uh, briefly on an episode of Flashback. My best friend Stuart uh, had this game, and that's Kung Fu. And, uh, and then the last one here, um, and I'll, I have this because, so I have, uh, I have Donkey Kong classics, but that's not a black label game or a black box game. But, uh, so I have Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, covered and, uh, but here I have, uh, Donkey Kong three, which I thought it would be cool to check that out because I think, you know, everybody's familiar with Donkey Kong, but Jr. and three, uh, not so much. Uh, BB Garnett wants to know if I have mock writer. Uh, no, I don't, I don't have a copy of it, but again, we have the EverDrive, so, um, so we can check it out. And, um, and yeah, uh, what else we got? Um, New York Pinstripes is a sad, this game is way more fun than WWF WrestleMania. What a disappointing game that was. Yeah, I mean, was there ever a better wrestling game on the Nintendo than Pro Wrestling? I mean, there were several games. Uh, in fact, I want to say that Tag Team Wrestling was the first third-party uh, NES game ever. 
but that certainly doesn't mean that it's good. Um, Mario Brothers is probably fun for like five minutes max. Well, you know, kind of. That, that's kind of my point, I guess. You know, when I was a kid, I would go put a quarter into an arcade machine and play it. And then when I got game over, I would go move on to another game. And so it's just having those games at home just, I don't know, I wasn't attractive to me. Uh, Derek says Donkey Kong Math, please. I actually used to have that game. Uh, I picked it up cheap somewhere and then uh, stupidly sold it cheap. Uh, I think that's one of the games that uh, Josh might still need. So I wish I, if I still had it, I'd, I'd sell it to you cheap, Josh. Uh, Ninja Master says, did you get the Genesis analog deck to review? Yeah, the, the Mega SG. Uh, no, I, I pre-ordered one just like anybody else uh, can and just paid for it. And it's supposed to be here on Thursday. And uh, we'll see what I do with it. I don't think I'm going to end up using it to record gameplay footage for the show. Uh, just because I like using the OSSC um, better. Uh, just because I can get everything dialed in more. But uh, but the Mega SG should be something cool to have. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just pop in uh, Donkey Kong 3 here real quick while we're... I mean, I, don't, I can talk and play games at the same time, so... Uh, and thank you, uh, Daryl for another five bucks. Kung Fu for the win. Yeah, we'll definitely play some Kung Fu. Um, Tecmo Pro Wrestling was the best. All right. Well, you know, I should check it out. Um, I'm not sure I've ever played it, to be honest with you. Uh, Matt gave us two bucks. Great job on your videos. Thanks, Matt. I really appreciate it. I, I try to do my best. Uh, and I don't, I don't know when the next episode of the show is going to be out. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm working on it all week this week, but I can already tell it's not going to be done. Uh, by the end of the week, but hopefully I will have made enough progress that it'll be out shortly. Uh, cause I'm trying to get the next episode of, of classic gaming quarterly out, uh, quickly enough that I can also get the launch of the dreamcast out before I go on vacation. And that's going to be in mid May. So, uh, I have a lot of work, uh, ahead of me. Uh, anyway. Okay. So, uh, So I kind of don't, I, this is not a game I'm really familiar with. Uh, I guess we could have, uh, the whole reason for bringing back the guide was uh, was that we could check out, we could read about the games before we played them, which I guess we could still do. Because uh, now I'm kind of, oh man, that's a, that's a classic pause sound. That's cool. Anyway, um, let's see if Donkey Kong 3 is in here. Uh, then we can, just for fun, you know, we can just uh, read about it here. Okay, it's on page 156. So this is in the, the the back of the guide where it just has, like, really short synopses of, uh, of, the, of the game's tour. Uh, fire Rescue's here. Um, where have you been, man? Long time no see. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, well, I'm glad you're here, dude. Uh, okay, so I'm going to read you what it says here about uh, Donkey Kong 3 uh, when I find it. what page? Okay, here it is. All right, Donkey Kong 3, Bugman in the Greenhouse. Stanley the Bugman has his hands full in the greenhouse with flowers to protect and snakes, bees, and Donkey Kong making all kinds of trouble. That's an odd combination. Like, I understand having... Uh, well, first of all, if you have bees, that's a good thing. Snakes in the greenhouse is probably not ideal. Donkey Kong, a giant gorilla in the greenhouse... Uh, seems uh, like a bad thing. The spray can is his only weapon. How long can he fend off the coconuts and pesky critters? Uh, gameplay, you're Stanley the Bugman. Spray Donkey Kong to get him to the top of the vines and earn the special power spray can. Buzzbees, Queen Buzzbees, Bee Spies, and Crafty Snakes will attack you and go for the flowers. All the above can do you in, so look out. Buzzbee throws deadly darts. Donkey Kong throws crown conking coconuts. And everyone's out to get you. Don't let Donkey Kong drop out of the vines. Don't let time run out. And do practice. You'll be a winner and go to the next round. All right, well, whatever. Uh, so basically, uh, what it seems like we need to do is keep spraying Donkey Kong uh, ostensibly in the butthole with, uh, I guess that's pesticide, I don't know, while also spraying everything else. So... Uh, so let's do that. 
Uh, a and B button both do the same thing. one of the flowers. All right. uh, Rory, it's uh, uh, Donkey Kong 3. So, I mean, I can see where a game like this probably would have been really fun uh, in the arcade, but like I said, I just don't... Certainly, there's nothing about this game that would have made me uh, wish that I had bought it. See, and then I guess by doing that, I'm not really milking the game for maximum points. I mean, uh, I don't know. We're we're not going to play this for too long, I'll tell you right now. So, uh, Broken Tech says, nice Toyota jacket. Thanks, man. I didn't realize at first that you could climb back down. So that is helpful. Oh, you can rescue your flowers after they've been... Um, Stolen too, so that's nice. Oh, and you can jump up too. Oh man, this is already getting pretty serious, and uh, that flower's gone. Get out of here. Ooh, dead. Yeah, Larry, you're right. This this game really is kind of a shooter. Uh, you know, with just a different uh, facade. Uh, but, I mean, it's definitely not bad. Uh, and while I'm kind of finishing up playing this game... Um... Uh-oh, what does that mean? Well, I guess we're good. Uh, somebody request the next one. Um, please. All right, Teresa says Kung Fu, so she she was the first one to pipe up, so um, so that's going to be the first one that we play. But um, uh, obviously, a uh, game over. It's enough of that. Um, but we have plenty of time to play plenty of games here. So, uh, Ice Climber is definitely also a game I wanted to check out. Uh, Urban Champion, I'm not super excited about, but I'll play it. Um, Fire Rescue says Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Not a black box game, sir. Uh, so what did I say we're playing first? Kung Fu? Uh, just fair warning, I suck at this game. You know what's funny? I could tell when I was putting that game in that um, you can feel that it's dirty. So uh, just give me a minute. We're gonna we're gonna clean it real fast. I've got my uh, deoxit right here. See, this is why at some point uh, I should do a video about game cleaning. But uh, you know, spoiler alert: I'm not going to use Brasso uh, or or sandpaper. Although I do use uh, really, really fine grit sandpaper to clean uh, the 72 pin uh, connector. Sorry, I know that's thumpy. I'm opening the drawers. Oh my God, this is disgusting. Did I never open this one and clean it? Wow. Now I feel bad for putting it in the machine in the first place. Uh, Clue Clue Land. That, yeah, that's another one we're going to play. I like Clue Clue Land a lot. That was uh, one of the first... I mean, I don't remember what episode number it was. I feel like any video that I made, like before I started making launch videos, in my mind is like one of the first videos I ever made. Uh, I did a review of Clue Clue Land, and uh, and that's a cool game. Oh yeah, see now it felt much better when I when I uh, put it in the system. There, it went in smoothly. So uh, that's why we keep that stuff down here. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I should uh, check the chat real fast. Uh, we got a dollar from Josh. Thanks, dude. Uh, that's awesome. 
Uh, Rory played Gauntlet today. Uh, which Gauntlet? Gauntlet on the NES? Because uh, I love that one. Uh, Tiger Stell says, speaking of the jacket and racing, the F1 series on Netflix is awesome. You know what's cool about that is my wife is actually asking to watch that with me. Because, uh, you know, we're going to an F1 we're going to an F1 race this year, and so I told my wife she has to kind of uh, educate herself on racing so that she can, you know, get the maximum enjoyment out of going to a race. So uh, I guess she's taking that seriously. A couple people are asking for, or one person's asking for Popeye. Someone's asking for pinball. All right, we're gonna we're gonna play as many games as we can. So, um, Derek uses a screen cleaner. Um, I don't know what that is, but, uh, I mean, you should use whatever, uh, whatever works. And then, um, we need a video on cooking your favorite meal. Yeah. Trappist is one of the guys that's trying to get me to do classic cooking quarterly, which I really honestly want to do. Like you've convinced me. I just have to find the time to do it. Um, I was going to do it because, you know, uh, over in the discord chat, uh, Josh said that he's never had corned beef before in his life. And so I told him to make it, but he doesn't know how to make it. And so I thought, well, it's pretty easy to make corned beef. I was thinking that would be a good uh, video topic uh, just because it, it, anybody can make corned beef. So um, you can play Gyromite with two. Con- I don't have two controllers down here, so um, so I can't play. Uh, I can't play Gyromite. I do have a Rob the Robot, but I don't have um, uh, I don't have all of the uh, accessories that go with it. Uh, Derek, there's no game sound just because it's running in uh, teaser mode. So um, uh, there will be game sound uh, when we start playing. Uh, Broken Tech says, are you going to Circuit of the Americas? No, I'm actually going uh, to Monaco. Uh, I got free tickets to the Monaco Grand Prix. So I'm uh, going to that. Uh, Rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip? Yeah, rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip definitely uh, works just fine. I just don't actually have... Uh, any rubbing alcohol uh, down here, but uh, I have deoxit, which is uh, at least as good. All right. Anyway, now we can start playing. Um, all right. All right. Let me run my mess with the controls. Punch, kick. All right. So I don't know about anybody else. Whenever we played this game, so this is one of the few games that Stuart had. My recollection was that Stuart had uh, Super Mario Brothers because we all did, and then uh, he had Top Gun, which was a decent game. And I talked about that one a little bit uh, on the same episode of Flashback, I think, uh, as when I talked about this game. And this was the only other game uh, that he had. So he had three games. And, um, you know, part of that was probably that, you know, Stuart at that time was in sort of the same boat that I was when I went back to live with my mom, which is that there just wasn't a lot of money to throw around. And so, uh, we weren't really going to have a lot of games, but, but remember that Stuart was the one whose dad, uh, worked at Sierra, right? So, I mean, um, you know, he had a ton of computer games and so like he was primarily a computer gamer. nice so you know it, it's just you know for us like nintendo was cool and everything don't get me wrong but um i think we liked um playing computer games better so Teresa says monaco as in europe yeah that, that's the one say hi to prince albert for me you know if you've never read about prince albert of monaco uh He's a little bit of an interesting guy. Uh, I forgot how many, like, illegitimate kids I read that he has, which, hey, I'm not judging, but it's like... Um, I don't know. I don't know what my point is. I just I thought it was interesting. Because it's not like he has illegitimate kids with, like, other, you know, royal people or something. Like, he just... I don't know. Like, I don't know where he's picking these women up. Can you not kick the snakes? Is that the problem? Do you have to jump over the snakes? When I hear Prince Albert, all I can think of is the dumb joke. Well, that's better than what I think of uh, when I think of Prince Albert. Uh, When I was in uh, junior college, uh, a friend of mine, he kind of became my friend because we were like, uh, we were like lab mates. Uh, We took chemistry together and, you know, you had to have like a partner 
uh, when you did the lab portion of the class, I guess, because they probably just didn't have enough supplies to go around. And so you always did all of your experiments with a partner. And my partner was this guy, John. And, um, whoops. And, uh, John had a Prince Albert, if you know what that is. And word got around, uh, the class that he had that. And so, of course, you know, a bunch of the girls in the class were curious about it. And so he went into the, he, he like, like, you know, basically just said like, you know, you got, if you want to see it, I'll show you. And so I just remember that he went into the men's room or the ladies room. I forgot which with like a, a handful of girls. And I assume showed it to them. I obviously, I didn't go cause I don't want to see that, but, um, I don't know. I, I think that's a little bit, uh, creepy just that, I mean, I, I don't want to poke holes in that. And, um, it's just the first thing I always think of whenever anybody says, uh, the name Prince Albert. Sorry, I know I'm ignoring the chat uh, a little bit, but... Oh, man. Uh, we're about to die. Ah! Rick is wa washing your car while getting paid and listening to the show. That, that sounds like a pretty good deal you got going on. Um, all right, well... We're not going to play anymore. We, we played as far as we got in Kung Fu. So uh, that's the nice thing about these games is they're all pick up and play, right? So um, it seems like when I asked for suggestions, people suggested pretty much uh, every black box game, which is totally fine. Uh, one thing I should mention that I didn't is that uh, I brought down the zapper and uh, I have that plugged into the second controller port. Uh, just cause I have duck hunt here, but we could also check out like gun, uh, gumshoe or, uh, or wild gunman. But, uh, first let's play some clue clue land, uh, just cause we talked about it a little bit. So for that, uh, we'll have to plug in the Everdrive there. Yeah. Or Hogan's alley, but maybe it'd be easier if we just, let's play the light gun games, uh, all together. See, oh, there we go. Ooh, look at that. See what happened. I bet is um, Kung Fu made the pins dirty. But we don't have time to clean the system, so we're going to just kind of self-clean it a little bit. Uh-oh, now we got problems. All right. Hang with me for just a minute. Yeah, see now we got now we got like schmutz residue on the on the EverDrive here. Sorry, I know that's loud. There we go. See? No big deal. Uh, and then I'm gonna I'm just gonna launch the game just so that it's running in teaser mode and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get caught up in the chat. Subtle Wookie said there's some black box games that I passed over at the thrift store today. Wow. Um, uh, Wookie there posted a picture uh, in the Discord. Uh, he had a pretty good day at the thrift stores today uh, and got a, a handful of pretty good games for for twenty bucks. So that makes me wonder. Uh, it makes me wonder what you passed up. I mean, if it was you know. If it was golf or something, then that's probably a, a black box game that you could go ahead and, and leave there. Uh, not that golf's a bad uh, a bad black box game or a bad Nintendo game, but I think it you know it was overtaken by um, better golf games. Unlike pro wrestling, apparently. Go old school, just blow on the game. Do not blow on your games ever. That's how they get like that in the first place half the time. In fact. So I mean, this is kind of gross, but uh, when I cleaned, uh, when I cleaned pro wrestling, um, I I took it apart. You know, I it, it's five screw, uh, so it just uses the normal flathead uh, screws. I I took it apart to properly clean it. Which, like I said, if I ever make that video, you'll see uh, how I do it. But um, 
but I had to take it apart to clean it. And, uh, you know, on top of cleaning the actual contact in the game, uh, you know, of course, when I get a game, I, I clean the whole outside of it, you know, to get it, you know, get it clean. Uh, I clean the inside uh, right here because, you know, in here it gets dusty, obviously, too. And you could actually see like dried. It's gross. You could see dried spit in here from where like somebody was like, you know, and you do that and you got like spit and mucus coming out of your mouth. It, it's pretty gross. And, um, but this game was super dirty. So, uh, I'm glad I cleaned it before I tried, um, uh, sticking it in, uh, in my system. Uh, thanks Teresa for, uh, posting the link to the discard. I appreciate that. Uh, Rory says you guys have great luck at your thrift stores. I don't, um, like Pebble Beach. No, I mean, Pebble Beach isn't really that great of a, of a golf game. It just happens to be the game, uh, that I had when, uh, when I was a kid, but like NES open tournament golf, uh, that's a really good golf game. Uh, Lee Trevino's fighting golf is, uh, is a good, uh, golf game. Um, I don't even know how to say your name. Unieski Acosta, uh, get bent. Uh, you passed up gyromite and pinball. Yeah. You probably don't want to pass up gyromite because if you get one of the heavy ones, then you get the, um, you get the 72 pin adapter, uh, inside of it, which is pretty cool. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and play. So I don't remember how to play this game. I probably haven't played this game, uh, since the last, since I did that, uh, video. So we'll see how, um, how that goes. So one of the cool things you kind of notice about this game is, um, oh, there we go, is uh, that it uses the same sprite. Uh, yeah, I got to remember the controls. I remember the controls uh, of this game being a little bit wonky, but, um, you know, it uses the same sprite as uh, rupees in uh, Legend of Zelda. And what you basically have to do, like, uh, you know, all of the, the rupees or whatever are, uh, are hidden. And you have to basically find them. Like, I think they, if I remember correctly, they kind of make sort of a rudimentary picture. And, uh, but you see, you kind of have like this hand or this hook that you can deploy to one side or the other by, uh, by pushing the D-pad in the appropriate direction. And sometimes the, the... There we go. He's dead. Uh, sometimes what the picture is going to be is sort of obvious, and sometimes it's not. But you can kind of use that to uh, dictate where you're going to go. And you can see that this is timed, of course. So uh, I guess the... Go get that cherry real fast. Uh, the music got faster, meaning that we're probably running out of time. Time. I, like I said, I haven't played this game in a long time, so I'm going to have to kind of um, remember what I'm doing. But uh, you can already maybe, maybe kind of tell this is going to end up being uh, a mushroom, like from uh, Super Mario Brothers, which I'm assuming was uh, intentional. And we just have one left here, but I think we get points if we kill these guys, so. Oh, still got one more. There we go. And if I had gone through that part, I, we would have gotten a second pink thing uh, as sort of the other trampoline looking thing or rubber band. And then it would have looked more uh, like, uh, like a mushroom. Uh, and I like Anne Berlin a lot. It says, think of how much less stress as kids we would have if Nintendo had uh, like a popular one page lesson, had a properly clean NES game. Well, they did sell the NES cleaning kit, which actually worked pretty well if uh, if you used it. But, you know, they were always really aggro about like, don't use solvents and, and don't get anything wet, uh, which is kind of the opposite of what you uh, what you should do. Uh, besides, if we hadn't all blown into our games, what would we have to talk about now?
William says, I like how most black box NES games are one screen. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of gives them their own flavor. You know, I mean, this is the very early days of uh, of the NES. So they, you know, much like... Um... Ooh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, much like the, the early days of the Genesis, which I'm also kind of a big fan of... Uh, these games kind of have a, a, a flavor to them that, that makes them a little bit unique compared to uh, the rest of the library. Oh yeah, don't go into the whirlpools either. I forgot about that. This one's going to be a star, if I remember correctly. Could be wrong, though. Oh, maybe not. Ooh, got me. Oh, I forgot what that one's going to be. Uh, I want to play one more time. Just like I said, this one's a little bit uh, trickier. Uh, just because it has kind of a, a weird control scheme. So, um... Uh, I'm going to reload. Play one more game. Can you not control your character with the D-pad? No, you 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 control your character with the D-pad by like kind of put... I don't know if that's supposed to be your character's hand or a hook, but uh, that's how you control the character. That's kind of like the thing that makes the game a little bit unique. If you could just like control your guy normally, uh, certainly the game would be a lot easier. There we get that time bonus. Well, it's not a time bonus. I see it freezes everybody. Well, that's handy, too. I want to see if we can... Like some kind of creepy clown face or something. I don't care for that. Ooh, I think we're almost there. There we go. Yep, creepy face. Oh, Fire Rescue you found a Sears catalog on. Oh, a 1989 Sears catalog? I would love to have one of those. Um. Although I think there are scans of all those online. I think I've actually used those on my show before.
wasting time. What's that supposed to be? I can't even tell. Um, Shane gets excited for the new consumers distributors catalogs. I don't even know what. Sorry, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's a Canadian thing or something. Uh, Samuel Rivera says, "Chris, do a read through." Uh, I'm going to, but I'm I'm trying to get the next uh, sort of big episode of the show, if you will, uh, out first. And, uh, and then I'm, my plans after that are to do a read-through uh, and then hopefully to uh, finish up the launch of the Dreamcast. see what I'm missing. Oh, I see. Never mind. Dang it. Hmm. So, oh, I see which one I still want. Okay. There we go. I don't know if you guys have ever uh, played Mario's Picross. This game kind of reminds me of that uh, a little bit. Uh, Fire Rescue says you missed the flashback episodes. Any plans for a new one? Yeah, I actually, I'm not going to show you because it would ruin the surprise, but uh, I actually have my notes right over here. Uh, for the next one, I just need to record it. Uh, sorry, I'm just getting caught up here. Um, I guess I am caught up. Yeah, uh, Picross, uh, there was a Pick. wasn't there? I can't remember what it was called. There was a Picross game that got released... Uh, for the DS, and uh, that one was pretty cool. And of course, there's the original Mario's Picross for the Game Boy. But um, at least for a while, I feel like that game was a little bit uh, expensive. I don't know if that's still the case or not. game over. All right, that's enough of Clue Clue Land, I think. Um, what happened? I can't remember what happened if I... Okay, cool. Uh, another one I wanted to check out, and this is a game that I've really never played. Uh, well, that's not true. I played it once, but I played it earlier this week uh, just to check it out. Uh, outside of that, I've never played it, but I wanted to check out Balloon Fight. Um, just because watching uh, Bithead talk about it, uh, it seemed like it kind of had some cool music. And uh, I think that'll be a quick one anyway. So, um, so yeah, William says, any of you guys buy the CDs or movies from Columbia House growing up? Uh, yeah. Um, it was either, well, either Columbia or BMG, because remember, there, were, there was both. So, uh, but I'm pretty sure I had uh, Columbia. What's Balloon Trip? Okay, I want to check that out, but let's play the game first. Thank <laughs> you. 
One of the coolest things, I think, most impressive things, you know, the one time I played it the other day, or at least most impressive for me, was that, you know, you start off with the two balloons, and once one gets popped, uh, you actually feel the difference. Uh, it's that much harder to stay afloat, uh, which I just thought, ah, uh, we died. Uh, which I thought was an interesting detail. Um, as Bithead pointed out, uh, this game has uh, a lot of uh, similarity with uh, Joust. But uh, I, I don't know. I think it's different enough that I, I certainly wouldn't call it uh, a Joust ripoff. And then he also mentioned Flappy Bird. But to be honest, I, I don't think I've ever played Flappy Bird. So, Because uh, wasn't that the one where it was only available for a little while and then the guy pulled it? Uh, off of the store, which I'm sure was just a, a, a marketing tactic. Uh, but yeah, so I never played, um, never played Flappy Bird. Oh, dang it! Oh yeah, this is the music I thought was cool. This is like a bonus level. Bad, we missed two. It's pretty good. Yeah, Teresa says ten CDs for a penny, and then you owed your life to Columbia. That's that's really quite correct. Uh, Daryl says your wife plays balloon fight with you sometimes. That's cool. I bet if I showed my wife this game, I think she would like it. Uh, Samuel, oh, I see what you're saying, Samuel. You like to see a read through of a of a J.C. Penny or Sears catalog? That would be kind of cool. Uh, I mean, only to look at certain parts. I mean, nobody wants to see uh, my opinions on mattresses and and uh, kitchen appliances. But I think there'd be enough cool stuff, like in a Sears catalog, because there'd be the electronics, video games, toys. Uh, that would be a lot of fun uh, to do, actually. Imagine this in VR. Um, I, don't, I never played VR, so I don't really have an opinion on that, but that might be kind of cool. Chris Vanderhoff says Commodore 64 next week. Uh, no, ne so next week, we're, but I should do that soon. I agree. The thing with doing a Commodore 64 stream is it would be cooler if I had one of those ultimate 64 cartridges, uh, which I should just buy anyway. Um, I think that would make it a cooler stream. But, uh, next week, I think I'm probably going to stream, uh, the Mega SG which is really, really just means it's going to be a Genesis stream. I mean, I guess I'll show real quickly some of the options on the Mega SG, but really, if you want to see that kind of stuff, you should watch uh, my life in gaming's review of it or something. But uh, but I'm kind of excited to play it, and I, I figure we could kind of check it out together. But, uh, but yeah, it's just going to be mostly a normal uh, Genesis stream. Okay, Shane, I'll, I'll check it out when the stream is over. It was kind of like Costco before Costco. That's kind of cool. Oh, we're stuck. Why does some of the why are some of the guys a different color? Like why is that guy green? Lightning. Ooh, that guy got eaten by the sea monster. Oh no 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 no! There we go. Whew. 
See, now we only have the one, um... Uh, the one balloon, and so it's a little... It's a little bit harder to fly. Oh, I didn't see that guy coming. Alright, what is that, our second life, though? Oh, I guess not. Game over. Oh, well. That was fun. Uh, and then I wanted to go ahead and play Ice Climber next. And, um... So that's another game. I don't have a whole lot of experience with Ice Climber. I think I, I tried it once and didn't like it, and I think never played it again. But a lot of other people seem to like it a lot. So I think I'm just not used to the controls. But then uh, after that, what time is it? It's only 6.15. So, um, I mean, you guys tell me some other games to check out. I mean, Mario Brothers, I guess, would be cool to check out for five minutes. Um, but yeah, I mean, let me know uh, what else you guys think. I don't know, 30 bucks for a JCPenney catalog seems kind of pricey to me. Oh, yeah, you're right, uh, 1903. Uh, well, let's go ahead and, you know, I already got this one loaded, so let's check it out. But yeah, I do want to see what that um, other mode is all about. I mean, I, don't, I guess I kind of don't understand the point of this game. Uh, I mean, am I... It's called Ice Climber, right? So my, is climbing my primary motivation? Like, am I supposed to be trying to kill all these dudes, or does that kind of not matter? Ooh. Hey, eggplants. That was another thing I, I, I noticed. It seemed like Bithead was trying to figure out, like, what other game he'd seen eggplants in. And I instantly thought of Kid Icarus, but I don't know if that's what he was thinking or not. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. All right, that's kind of tough. Um, Eric, yeah, we had best uh, where I was growing up. But uh, we didn't go there too terribly often. Anybody else remember Gemco? We had Gemco also where I was growing up, and that was um, that was a business that got bought out uh, by Target. So like our Gemcos turned into Targets. But wasn't wasn't Best the place where like you like you didn't if you wanted to buy something expensive or something like. I'm trying to remember. It's like they would go get it for you and then like send it down on a conveyor belt or something. says your target used to be a gem code. Yeah. It's kind of one of the reasons I'd like to one of these days, if I ever go to New York City, uh, I want to go to B&H Photo because that's how, uh, that's how they operate is that there's like a conveyor belt. And if you, if you want to buy something, uh, that, that's how they get it for you. Are you kidding me? Uh, my fault. Uh, NES Pinball? Yeah, we can check out NES Pinball. 
Let's let's do that after this. I just want to go back to balloon fight real quick because I was just really curious what that other mode was, and uh, and then we'll play some pinball. And then at some point, I I, I want to check out uh, some uh, light phaser games. Although to be honest, like I'm not really sitting far enough away from the CRT that uh, light gun games are probably going to be um, all that uh, challenging. But I think it'll, it's just for fun. Best Buy, you take the tag of the item, you pick the pickup area, and yes, they drop it down a conveyor belt. Yeah, I just feel like that's the thing I remember about Best was the conveyor belt. Um, and Tahid wants to see pinball as well. Okay, so cool. Uh, we used to have this awesome and pretty big comic store called... I don't know how to even pronounce that. Um, oh, yeah, did I say light phaser? Sorry. I've had light phasers on the brain lately. Zapper. Um, and yeah, Sam, I'll play, I'll play Duck Hunt, but like I said, let's, I, it's easier, I think, if we just kind of group, um, uh, group all of the, uh, light gun games, uh, together. And yeah, Montgomery Wards, I used to go there for sure. Anyway. Oh, this is that, like, infinity thing. Wasn't Bithead talking about this because he wanted to know if it had an end? I don't think it does, does it? I mean, the whole point is, like, you're playing for high score, so you have to avoid all of these, like, lightning balls or whatever and pick up as many green balloons as you can. Ooh. Oh, I see the... I think that... Yeah, that stops the screen for a minute. That doesn't help us today. I just think that's really good music for for ooh, for an early Nintendo game. Cool bass line in the background. And you can see your your score is slowly counting up, so you're also getting points just for, uh, well, basically just for staying alive. Ooh, <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, that's a cool mode. I like that. And um, what I say, we we're gonna do a pinball. Back in the day, Gamer says the Kmart's in your area all closed recently. You know, until recently, I thought all the K I thought Kmart was like gone, but apparently we still have one in this area somewhere. I see Pinball Quest right above that. I think I rented Pinball Quest. Uh, one time when I was a kid. Man, 
make sure I got my controls down here. So, I mean, this game seems like marginally better than uh, like one of the pinball games on uh, the Atari. You know, like what was that, Midnight Madness or whatever. So, I mean, not bad for, for such an early release because I'm pretty sure uh, that this was actually a launch game. As I suppose were most of the black box games, but not all of them. So, um, you know, how much could you realistically expect? You know, but then there, there was like... Uh, what was it? It was Pinbot, and I always forget the other one. Uh, they were both uh, Trade West uh, releases. I can't remember who actually uh, coded those games, but uh, what was the other one? High Speed, I think, was the other one. It was Pinbot and High Speed that um, were both pretty impressive uh, 8-bit approximations of um, of real-world pinball uh, tables. And so certainly that was a lot better than this. But, you know, again, this this game, uh, you know, was years older. Uh, I don't know what year this came out uh, on the Famicom. But, uh, and I also don't know what year uh, Pinbot and, and High Speed came out. But, um, you know, a lot of these early Nintendo games are, are primitive for a reason. And that's because they really are quite a bit older. That being said, I mean, this game is still really fun. Uh, you get another appearance from Mario. That's pretty cool. And then, uh, who is that? That's Paulina, right? Uh, that's not, uh, well, that's not Princess of Anything, but uh, that's the same chick that you're trying to save in Donkey Kong, if I remember correctly. Uh, the closest Kmart to you is 22 miles away. That's probably about how far away uh, mine was, too, I guess. Pinbot was made by Nintendo, actually. Really? I'd have I'd have to go look at my cartridge to convince myself of that. I like Anne Berlin a lot. It says here, here's a sponsor idea for when you're ready. Food delivery promo code. I don't get it. That if you're saying I could, I could like if I hooked up with like, uh, I mean, like, what do you mean, like Uber Eats or one of those places? Like, see, that'd be the perfect thing, uh, to like peep out on a live stream, right? Because people are sitting there, they're watching your live stream. And then you say, like, hey, if you put in, you know, promo code CGQ, uh, Uber Eats will give you like 10% off of your order. Uh, that would be pretty effective. That being said, like I said, I, I, um, I, I, my hope is really that the, uh, the Patreon campaign will, you know, I know it's not going to happen overnight, but hopefully it kind of grows some legs and, uh, and I don't have to really even think about trying to get, uh, sponsorship money for the most part. Um, I really liked having, uh, the Sega sponsorship because that really just made perfect sense for, uh, for my show. But other than that, I would. Rather not have to do that anymore. Um, at least before I started the stream tonight, I was already up over fifty dollars on uh, on Patreon, and that was just from talking about it on Twitter. So, uh, so that's promising. But uh, as I think I mentioned on, uh, I think I did. Was it a Q and A video or something on this channel? I did this whole thing. It was about the economics of YouTube or whatever. And like I mentioned, you can usually count on about one percent uh, of your audience. Uh, doing Patreon, but, you know, that's for people that maybe have been doing it all along, so maybe for me it won't even be that, um, won't even be that much, but like I said, I'm only, really my first, my first idea or my first hope is just to get up to, like I said, 500 bucks, uh, and then, and then do the, uh, Let's Read, uh, the once a month Let's Read, so, uh, we'll see how that goes, but, you know, uh, anything is good, just, I mean, the 50 bucks that I'm already have people pledged for is already that's already more money than I would make off of um ad revenue on uh, on a let's read so um so that's pretty awesome 
200 people at $5 sponsorship each would be great. No, I mean, that would be, that would be really awesome. But, um, you know, I, maybe this is me being a little bit too altruistic, but, uh, you know, for me personally, I think most content creators that I sponsor on Patreon, it's either one or $2. Uh, and kind of my thinking with that is just that if more people would, would give just a single dollar to their favorite content creators, then those creators would, you know, have more of the tools needed for them to keep making awesome content. So, uh, and that was also part of the reason that I didn't want to create a bunch of tiers. It's just like, ooh. Uh, it's just that, like, you know, I kind of want to encourage people, like, hey, man, you know, just just do a dollar. Like, there's nothing wrong with, with doing that. Uh, because, like, I would rather somebody sign up for Patreon and give a total of $10 a month to 10 different people then give me the $10 because that like, that just helps more people and helps create more content on whether that's on YouTube or, or podcasts or whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, that being said, I, I, I got several people that are giving me five bucks and, and that's awesome too. But, um, you know, I guess I kind of look at things as being more than just about me. So But anyway, like I said, I don't I don't want to get super annoying and keep talking about uh, Patreon. So it's funny people keep asking me about the Mega SG. Um, yeah, so it, as I said, it's coming on Thursday. Originally, when I got the shipping information, it said it was coming Wednesday, but uh, dang it! But now it's coming Thursday, which is fine. I'm I mean I'm so busy this week doing my show that um, I don't really have. Um, uh, uh, I don't really have too much time to mess with it, to be honest. So uh, the fact that it's not coming till later is like not like uh, what hurry am I in? So oh, come here. No, uh, I mean I'm gonna have to mess with the settings on it more. I'm just you know I guess the thing I'm curious about with the Genesis is that you have a lot of games that run in uh, 320 by 240. And you have a lot of games that run in, I think it's 256 by 240. And so on my OSSC, um, I have two separate profiles uh, for those two resolutions uh, because uh, Firebrand X created separate profiles for each. And then he also has a text file that tells you uh, which games run in that 256 mode, which is... Uh, uh, a minority of games, but, um, like for instance, a lot of games will run, part of it will run in 256 and then part of it will run in 320. And like examples of that, like I recently recorded some gameplay footage of Golden Axe and, um, like the, the whole intro, like the splash screen or whatever. And, uh, you know, the character selection screen, all that stuff is in 256 by 240. And so I was able to just dial that in on my OSSC and uh, record those bits. And then I loaded up the 320 by 240 profile and recorded the actual gameplay. And so that way on my show, um, you know, when I edit it all together, uh, all the footage will look perfect. And so I just, I wonder what the Mega SG uh, does about situations like that. And I'm not saying it doesn't do anything. Uh, like, I haven't watched any of the reviews uh, of the Mega SG yet, so I just don't know what it does. I imagine that's the kind of thing that uh, Corey and Try would probably talk about on uh, their review. Uh, so that's, you know, I'm probably only going to watch one review, and it's probably going to be that one, only because they really go over, like, all of the settings and whatnot. Like, theirs was the only review I watched of the Super NT, because it's even, it's almost like it's not even really a review. I mean, like, does a product like that really need a review? Like, it's good. It's an analog product. Like, what have they ever released that, that well, I shouldn't say that. Like, their, um, their original product, the CMVSs, weren't really all that great. But certainly that guy learned from his mistakes, I think. Um, 
and is putting out a better product. Uh, you know, the the original NT uh, and then the NT Mini are are. Is that two separate things, the original NT and the NT Mini? I don't even. I wasn't really paying attention to their stuff back then, so I don't have one of those. But uh, whatever that aluminum thing is, uh, is certainly overpriced. But uh, you can't really say that it's not a good product. And uh, I have the Super NT and can attest to the fact that that's a great product. So um, I guess my point that I'm just trying to make is that like I don't really need to watch a review. Uh, because in my opinion, it's already like, I know it's, it's a good product and it's worth 190 bucks. But when you watch, uh, like my life in gaming's video, it's really more helpful in my opinion, if you already own it or are planning on buying it and want to kind of learn, uh, how to best set it up and how to use it. So, uh, I am going to watch their video, but I'm probably going to wait, uh, until the unit actually gets here. I'm going to go ahead, uh, yeah, I was going to say I'll, I'll pause it when I lose this part, but I just did, so. Um, I need to scroll up a little bit. Maybe you should start a Patreon so you can quit teaching and just write about the wild full time. Uh, I mean, I don't know, uh... You know, I would need a lot of patrons before I could quit my job and do the show full time. So uh, I don't really see that happening uh, for me. So I'm not speaking for you, uh, obviously. Uh, did I see that the creator of Final Fantasy is part of the new upcoming Apple Arcade? Uh, I don't know. Okay, Samuel and I are in the same boat. I don't know what Apple Arcade is. Um, it was just announced at yesterday's keynote. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't watch that kind of stuff. Uh, Clay says it has a ton of adjustment options to make sure it displays properly. I'm sure it does. I just have to see uh, how it works. I mean, for me, it's um, it's really easy with the OSSC because I just have the two profiles saved on there. So, like, Profile 2 is Genesis 256 mode and Profile 3 is Genesis uh, 320 mode. So uh, it's um, very easy. Anne Berlin says, is anyone else having, having trouble now getting on the CGQ store? Um, yeah, they're in the process of upgrading... Uh, the OS on the web server. So uh, I'm not surprised that it doesn't load, which is really a bummer since I wanted to sort of announce the new store to everybody tonight that, you know, coincidentally now it's not working. But um, I'll just bring it up again next week, which is going to annoy some people, but um, that's okay. Game Sacks video was great for laughs. Yeah, it usually is, but um, that doesn't mean it won't be a good review. I mean... They always do a good job with their videos. So Mega SG has settings for both resolutions and applies your settings to each automatically. If that's true, that would be um that would definitely be nice if it if it on the fly uh switches back and forth. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I think that was enough pinball. So I don't, um, I don't know if you guys want to get into the light gun games now. It's six, six forty. Um, I mean, I've got, we need to end sometime between seven and seven thirty. I was hoping to cook dinner tonight, but, uh, I have some ground pork in the fridge. It's going to make meatballs. And then I don't know how this is going to work, uh, with the, uh, with the zapper and, um, the microphone. Because I'm, I'm kind of worried about the the clicking or whatever you want to call it sound coming out of the zapper being uh, too loud. So I might end up moving the microphone to the side, but then that's not going to sound great uh, as far as my voice goes. You know, I just realized I never changed the OSSC profile uh, for the NES. I don't even know what the OSSC profile for the NES is. And uh, I don't know. It looks fine, so I'm not going to mess with it. Yeah, the spring sound. So, um, we can play some duck hunt, but you know, that's the game that I've played, uh, the most. So I think it'd be more fun to check out, uh, some of the other ones. So, uh, we're just going to check these out in, uh, no particular order. We'll just do gumshoe first. I don't know how to even start the game here. Do I just... Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Hold on, we're all tangled up. I knew that was going to be a problem. Sounds very ominous. Clue, clue, venom with the zapper. I'm not sure that works. There we go. All right. Um, I'm going to see what I can do here to try. I just don't want my voice to sound totally crappy. Hey, wake up. Oh. How do you play this? Oh, I see. You shoot him and he jumps. Well, this is very interesting. I don't think I've ever played this game. Bayou Billy has a light gun level. Yeah, Bayou Billy is a pretty cool game. Not a black box game. Whoa. This is a very strange game. Like, I don't... I'm not sure I understand the premise at all. Oh, man. Oh, keep shooting to jump higher. Okay, that's um, good to know. Screen grab that and do our next Remember the Alamo Photoshop. Um, yeah, that would be cool. Ah, thank you for the tip. pretty cool game. I can't believe I've never played this game. I think I get it uh, confused with Hogan's Alley. You can also shoot the bottle. Okay, that's good. Then I didn't know you could shoot sort of the things that are trying to kill you. Got your daughter. Bring the five Black Panther diamonds to me within 24 hours or else. Like, if you're trying to save someone's daughter, why are you even worried about picking up balloons? Blocking the whole screen with my hand. Ooh. Oh, man. Hey, Christopher. That's my name, too. All right. Uh, one more. turns into a cooked bird. You, know, you can eat them. That's pretty cool. This game is good enough that I can, I'm surprised you never, or at least I never, hear anybody talk about it. It's just unique, you know? Hmm. 
sorry, no, I'm skipping all the balloons. I guess I'm kind of more concerned about uh, staying alive than I am with... Cool game, though. Uh, don't touch the death. Yeah, I figured that one out. Don't land on a cactus. That's just good advice uh, in life in general, I think. Um, did the vulture have sunglasses on? I, I didn't ca catch it. I feel like the NES neglected to include the concept of reloaded. You know, It's funny because while I was playing this game, I was even thinking uh, it's a good thing that um, it didn't make you reload in this game because that kind of would have been uh, too much. Uh, hey, Jameson, welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, I, I am, I'm playing it on a CRT, yeah. Yeah, that's true. You can't really play, um, you can't really play these games on a flat screen. Isn't someone supposedly making a, um, a new, uh, zapper that's supposed to work with, um, HDTVs? Anne Berlin says, Chris, you seem to have a good thumbs forward grip. Have you ever been to a range? Yeah. So when I was in like high school and early college, uh, my best friend was really into guns. And um, he and his family, we, they would go to like the gun range and uh, target shoot and whatnot. And uh, so they took me a couple times. So I got to go um, shoot some guns, which was, which was um, pretty fun, I got to say. Uh, okay, well, that was Gumshoe. Uh, what do you think next? Maybe, uh, Hogan's Alley, I guess? Oh, sorry, I have to get this controller. Uh, yeah, that's in the same folder, so let's do Hogan's Alley. Uh, and then Wild Gunman was the other one I wanted to play. And then we can play some, um, we can play some Duck Hunt, although I say I think... Uh, I think that's the one that I find the least compelling. Wow, Hogan's Alley is 1984 game. Um, yeah, shoot gangs only. Well, that's easier said than done. Ooh, shot the professor, dang it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. You don't have to rub it in. I'm too old. I don't have uh, quick decision-making skills anymore. I feel like this game is less fun to watch. But I guess that's up to you guys. Yeah, uh, Mujanga, let's let's try not to get political in the chat if that's all right with you. Action Max stream win. You know, I actually had. Didn't I mention that I had an Action Max uh, when I was a kid? Um, I would totally stream that if I had one. That would be pretty fun. Oh man, there was two there. Oh, that's it's telling you how many seconds it took you. I see. Okay. Ah, uh, stupid professor. can't think fast enough.
Um, start a special Patreon campaign with the goal of this bithead and Chris go out for a night on the town, California, or New York. I mean, I would absolutely love to go out with Bithead, just get like a, a chicken parmesan sandwich or uh or a bacon egg and cheese and just and just uh shoot the breeze with him. But uh probably not gonna ever happen, who knows. Like if I was ever in New York, I would definitely wanna let him know and see if he wanted to hang out, but um I don't know. Sorry, I'm bumping the microphone a lot, but I don't really know how to deal with this thing. Game over. All right, game over. Um, let's check out some wild gunmen. We'll just try uh, game A because I haven't. I feel like I must have played this game, but I can't remember when. Uh, wasn't this gun or this game was in um, Back to the Future Part Two, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, never mind. William's way ahead of me. Ah, uh, D Forte's leaving. I'll see you, Daryl. Thanks for coming by. Oh, never mind. You're a friend of the show. I've heard other people thanking you in letters. Uh, yeah, that's really cool, and uh, it really meant a lot to me actually when uh, when Bit had put up. I sent him one of those big stickers. I don't think he understood what I was saying when I said it was a lid sticker uh, for a PlayStation, but uh, that was really cool that he immediately just went and put it up uh, on the back wall of his shed. Uh, I don't know. I that I got a huge kick out of that. So, uh, Rory says, "Did you already do Mock Rider? No, but we should do. Uh, we should do Mock Rider. Uh, unless anybody has like a a huge. Uh... Sorry, hold on. Uh, unless anybody really uh, has a huge objection to it, like I personally would rather skip Duck Hunt, and uh, Mock Rider would be uh, cool to check out." You keep asking, we can play Donkey Kong Jr. Math if you want to. I don't even remember anything about the game. So, uh, I mean, just for, for uh, you know, just for fun, uh, we could check it out. It's funny, sometimes I have, I have to stop myself from saying bad words uh, on the stream. Duck Hunt. Look at that, 250 milliseconds. All right, Teresa's got my back. Oop, a little slower that time. Yeah, 1903, I always get bored of Duck Hunt long before I start missing, missing shots. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, I got lucky. That's 80 milliseconds, but I I got lucky on that one. That was kind of a that was like a misfire that just worked out in my favor. <laughs> Wild West Murder Fest. Somebody should make a ROM hack of this and add a bunch of blood and like maybe you can shoot their heads off and they should call that Wild West Murder Fest. Is Duck Hunt banned in St. Canard? I don't, I don't know what you're getting at. Ooh, see, I accidentally... See, I'm trying to like pull the trigger in as much as I can, but then I slipped. Yeah, that, that actually is the kind of thing that Bithead would do. Is 
Anybody else getting bored? I'm kind of getting bored with this one. Cool game, but I, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like that was enough of that. Um, so I think now I can move the microphone back. Um, so I think that's enough with the, uh, the light gun games. Um, but, uh, I was going to say just for Rory, but it's really not, um, just for do the gang fight. Part. Actually. Yeah. That would be kind of cool. Let's move on. Yeah, we will. Hold on. He's, he's right though. I'd kind of like to see the, uh, gang fight. Like, what does that even mean? Oh yeah. We got to check that out. Ah, I was moving the microphone. Oh, this is pretty cool. Good. That was better than good. That's pretty neat, um, but uh, but yeah. Anyway, that's like I said, I think that's enough of the uh, zapper for a while, or I guess for the rest of the evening, really. Okay, so you said Mock Rider. I'm taking your word for it that uh, Mock Rider is a black box game. I'm pretty sure it is. Like silver label games don't count as black box games. Fighting course, endurance course, solo course. I'm going to do solo course first, just I want to see what the game is like. Oh, see, I, I didn't really watch too much Darkwing Duck, although... Um... Oh, here we go. Uh, I think I have season one of Darkwing Duck on uh, on DVD. Oh, I see, okay. Because um, they were selling them at Costco, some of the Disney afternoon uh, sets. So I, I got DuckTales... Tailspin and uh, and Darkwing Duck, I think, were the three that I grabbed. Oops. What is that? Oil? Ooh, wow, look at that. Alright, this is, uh, I don't know, that's cool and everything, but... Uh, I can tell that the uh, fighting mode or, or one of the other two modes is going to be more fun. So let's try fighting course. When you first heard I was doing black box games, you thought I'd gotten the idea from Pat the NES Punk. Um, no, I don't know what... Um, I don't know what Pat the NES Punk was doing um, that uh, would make me do that, but uh, I don't. I'm gonna be honest and say I don't really watch uh, Pat the NES Punk. Hey, Smoke Monster's here. Smoke Monster just gave me back the 10 bucks that I gave him uh, the other week. Thanks, Smoke. It's fine, Smoke. I'm just going to hold the 10 bucks for you and then I'm going to give it back. I'm going to give it right back to you next time. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Well, I'm glad you're here, Smoke. Let's 
trying to slow down so I can get behind this guy and shoot him, but that's all right. Why are there rocks in the road? Don't they have like a Department of Transportation? Was that, um, was that enough, uh, Mock Rider? What else we got to play? Um, Hang On for SMS is a more competent game, but this game's better. Yeah, I like Hang On for the Master System, personally. Um, I don't know, did they make the game? Uh, Rare made RC Pro-Am. I don't know if they made this one, but, um, due to budget cutbacks, rock removal is no longer available. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so what else should we play? What do we, what do we got left? Um, oh, well, how about since, um, since we're doing, uh, or well, since we did a motorcycle theme game, let's just play some Excite Bike real quick. But in the meantime, somebody else tell me what else to play. Uh, has tennis been played? No, we could play some tennis. That'd be cool. And yeah, you're welcome, uh, Rory. The game audio really not too loud because it's really loud in my ear. I guess I'll, I'll find out when I watch the um, uh, when I watch the archive. It, it's funny; it makes sense because you know last week I was trying to make it sound in my ear like I wanted it to sound on the stream, where I could just kind of hear the game audio, and then when I went back and watched the archive, like. I don't, I mean, I don't understand why none of you guys said anything, because, like, I couldn't hear the game audio, like, at all. But, I mean, you know, why would you want to hear game audio when you can hear my voice instead? Oh, man, every, every time I load up this game, it takes me right back to what I was talking about on that flashback episode, man. Sitting and playing this game until the sun went down and it was dark in the room. I don't know why I never got this game, because I really did enjoy uh, that weekend that I had with it uh, when I rented it from the guy that we decided to call Chad, even though that's not really his name. All right, everybody says it's fine, so... Uh... I believe you. Did anybody ever pronounce it excite a bike? Uh, I mean, nobody I knew, but it doesn't mean that there weren't people out there doing that. I mean, I think we all had uh, our own ways of mispronouncing games. Now I, I, I'm trying to get in the habit of looking it up if I'm even a little bit suspicious that maybe uh, it's a game that's not being pronounced properly by, well, by me. Just because I really get tired of having to hear about that when I upload a new video. Like, oh, you're not pronouncing that right. Like, so? Like, I don't ever want to talk about Ninja Gaiden on my show. Because if I say Ninja Gaiden, then I'm going to have people saying it's Ninja Gaiden. And then if I have people, if I say Ninja Gaiden, then I'm going to have people saying, like, why are you saying it like that? It's Ninja Gaiden. Like, I don't know. I just shouldn't. Oh, I just shouldn't read the comments in my videos. You could see someone's grandma calling it excite a bike. Yeah, the kind of person that would call uh, a Nintendo game a tape is the kind of person that would probably say excite a bike. There we go. Ninja Gaiden is the first one that comes to mind first with that. I mean, if I was talking about the game on my show, I would say Ninja Gaiden because I don't want to say it correctly. But if I was just like hanging out with friends or talking to you guys on a stream, it, it's Ninja Gaiden. Like it was Ninja Gaiden the whole time we were growing up. And uh, I don't want to call it something else. But, you know, if I'm doing an episode of my show, I feel like, you know, the standards are different. Although that being said, it, that doesn't mean I haven't ever mispronounced something on my show. Um, like, like Gradius, I said. Although that's an example. Like we all, we all said Gradius when I was growing up, but now I say Gradius because I think Gradius sounds kind of stupid, um, and Gradius sounds better. I don't know why we weren't saying that back then. 
I still don't understand why I was saying Gradius when I made that episode of the show. That, that was very strange. Because I've never said that, but I think just the day I was recording the voiceover, for some reason I had it in my head uh, that it was Gradius, which, uh, you know, of course I got an earful about that, but um, whatever. I suppose if you if you play this game like on an emulator, then you could load up the Famicom Disk System version and design tracks and save them, right? Can you do I don't know if Smoke Monster is still here. I wonder if you could do that on the Mister. I don't know if he even knows. Um, or uh, this game was on the NES Classic, right? But I think you still couldn't save your tracks on that. Uh, I could be I shouldn't even say that because I, I could be wrong. But uh oh. And I already forgot what game. Oh, so we're playing. We're playing tennis after this. That's cool. We can check out. You know, the other game I, I kind of wanted to check out. I've never played volleyball. That was another black box game. In fact, let's. We'll make this the last track. Oh, I thought I had it. All right, I see there's the chat's flying by and I'm missing it, but um, I'll get caught up here in just a minute. Dang it, I missed the little thingy. Well, wow, Alpha puts it an uh, interesting way. It's only mispronounced if you change the way you speak to please others. That's called being fake. Well, I don't know. I think that there's, you know, the way we pronounce things as misinformed kids back in the day. But, you know, I think that if I'm doing a show or I'm trying to present myself as some form of, you know, expert or whatever, uh, I think I have a responsibility to try to pronounce things properly rather than how I grew up pronouncing them. I, I, I don't know what... I would say ZBs. That's how I would pronounce that. ZBs. Uh, Smoke Monster says, You can save on the NES Classic one. They did an official hack, and I have the dump of that. Oh, that's very cool. Um, well, see, that's why I shouldn't have said anything. I saw... See, okay, so that's like I Am Psy brings up that game. See, I always say Zezix, even though that's clearly wrong. I don't know how you're supposed to say that. Zez, Zezes, Zexies, I don't know. They pulled those high angle ramps off the expressway, exactly. Oh, that's another one, Derek. Yeah, Faxanadu. We all said Faxanadu, even though it's Fazanadu. Uh, I only learned that because I talked about Fazanadu on an episode of uh, Let's Read. Uh, and it's funny, it just never even occurred to me that, that it had something to do uh, with Xanadu, and that it, it was the sequel, because we never got that game here, right? There was the game Xanadu, and then Fazanadu was like the Famicom version of Xanadu, and that's how it got its name. So, uh, so like that's one where where now I say Fazanadu. Uh, now that I now that I learn that. Um, the wife's jealous. Got a roll. Uh, you got to keep the wife happy, man. Um. See you, see you next time. Uh, okay, so we said tennis, so let's check out tennis. Uh, tennis and volleyball. Oh, it's 7-Eleven. All right, so um, 
I got to bounce sooner sooner than later though here. Uh, so if there was any other game that anybody was like really hoping to see tonight, uh, tell me now. Um, because we got to kind of wrap things up here a little bit, which always makes me sad. I, I always feel like the time that I spend doing these live streams uh, goes by really fast. Um, it really is something that uh, that I look forward to. Oh wow! I just get an ace. That's awesome. Uh, you know, as much as it, I, f I always feel like oh, that's out. I always feel like time, you know, goes by generally really fast. Uh, I think the older you get, the faster time seems to go by. I think it has something to do with how your brain processes memories as you get older. Like, I think there's actually a scientific basis for why it feels like your life's going by so quickly. But then for some reason, every time I do a live stream, it feels like it's been a while since I did the live stream. I can't really explain it. Um, but then while I'm doing the live stream, then it goes by super quickly, but, um, you know, I don't, uh, I, you know, I, I would love to live stream more often, even than once a week. Like I really have fun doing this, but, um, you know, I got other things I got to work on and, you know, when I live stream too much, then I got people who watch the show telling me that I'm turning into a Twitch streamer or something, which, uh, which, you know, I, I don't mind when somebody says something like that, right? Like, that's just a viewer giving feedback, and, like, that's totally cool. But at the same time, like, it kind of makes me feel self-conscious about doing this because I don't want to be giving the impression that I'm turning into a streamer. It was just, you know, something fun to do and, and a way to just sort of, you know, connect with you guys on a more uh, personal level. So, um, but, like, that being said, like, I don't... Ooh, did I hit him right in the nuts? Um... You know, like, I don't like the fact that if you look at my uploads, like, they're dominated by streams. Like, it would be nicer if it could be, like, more balanced between, like, uh, you know, stream and then a flashback episode, ooh, ace, and then maybe, like, a mail episode, which, speaking of that, I gotta hurry up and record a new, like, pickups video slash mail episode, because I've gotten a lot of crap this month. I went to the post office the other day. Uh, only because I was in the area. I mean, I was, you know, I was going to downtown Davis, and so I went and hit up the post office, and I had three packages in a parcel locker, and uh, all three of them was just uh, stuff that got sent to me from uh, from you guys. So nothing that I was expecting or that I ordered. So uh, so that was cool, but uh, I'm just saying, like, stuff's kind of starting to pile up. Uh, like, I've got another package from uh, Derek and Teresa I got to show. I got a package from... Um, from Ryan, uh, Ryan Reinbold. Um, and then I got the three packages that I got um, uh, the other day. Uh, I didn't. I don't really have that much stuff that I bought, actually. I've only got a few things to show that I bought. Oh, I've also got a huge stack of postcards. Those meatballs aren't going to make themselves. Yeah, that's right. Uh, hey, Christian. Wow, I haven't seen Christian around in a while. Um, like the haircut. Yeah, it's uh, it's called a, a number two. Oh, yeah. No, number two. Yeah. Uh, I actually, I trim my, my hair up here shorter than my beard now. Uh, I used to do them the same. Uh, but um, no, it wasn't the same. Actually, I used, to, I used to cut my hair a number four, which is pretty long. And then the beard was a two. And, uh, and then I've kind of reversed it. Now my beard, I think, is a three, and the head is a two. So um, I'm sure that's why you guys tune into the live streams, is to hear about my uh, personal grooming habits. Sorry, I'm just trying to get caught up here. Um, Eric says, I love the game, but yeah, it's not fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, I think maybe we can go ahead and switch to, uh, to something else there. So, uh, but it is fun to play. Um, in my opinion, at least. First, we need to teach him how to play Excite Bike. How was, was I not, uh, he doesn't pull, he doesn't pull wheelies on the way up. Well, yeah, I, I probably need to learn how to play Excite Bike a little bit better. Um, oh man, Virtua, see, Virtua Tennis on the Dreamcast, that would be something cool, uh, to stream.
any update on the Atari poster. Uh, not yet, but it's going to happen, I swear. Um, I just need to take care of it. It's, it's not, it's just me not, not doing it. Like I leave, I need to go get it and put it with my stuff. Cause all I need to do is, is one day when I leave the house and I'm, and I'm going to work, I just need to go take it and drop it off. So, um, I just need to get on that. Uh, so what else do we, did, did anybody, uh, have any other games that they wanted us to check out? Like I said, I want to check out volleyball. Uh, never seen slalom is slalom a black box game. I think it is cinnamon toast for dinner, not meatballs, but you do what you have to. I eat a lot of cinnamon toast, man. All right. Someone says slalom is it? Well, let's play slalom instead of, um, instead of volleyball. Cause for all I know, volleyball sucks, but, uh, but then that's, that's probably really going to have to be, uh, the last game is we'll play that for a few minutes and then I'll switch the view back and, and probably shoot the breeze with you guys for a few minutes. Uh, and by that time it'll probably be pushing seven thirty, and, um, like I gotta, it takes a while to make the meatballs. So my wife's probably going to be home by seven thirty or eight. So. When is the CGQ store going to start sh dry ice shipping warm and eat food? You know, what I really should do, I should have like a signature line of sausages. That's actually a good idea that I'll never do, but... Pretty cool music, in my opinion. I like that background too. It looks really good in RGB too. The the purple and white mountains back there look really neat. Well, he's happy. CGQ meets. Christopher Bailey says, I don't love the black box games. I mean, they're history, but the further I get away from them, the less I want to play them. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, uh, <clears throat> I kind of, I mean, a lot of the games aren't that great. I mean, I think they're fun pick up and play games, and certainly I've enjoyed doing this live stream, but uh, they're, uh, for the most part, they're not games that I, I choose to play uh, on um, on my own time. Maybe start some easy-to-make cooking videos that hold well in the fridge for a few days before your next stream. I'm in my early 30s, and I don't know how to cook much. Yeah, that that's the thing that that's kind of why I want to make videos like that. Is I I realize that you know based on some comments some of you guys have made that you know maybe a lot of you guys don't know how to cook, which you know I'm not no judgment at all, but but um, you know wouldn't it be nice if you uh, ooh, if you could just learn how to cook a few things. Um, I feel like cooking is one of those things that, you know, when people are just getting started or don't know how to cook, it, it seems like this daunting thing when really it, it doesn't have to be. Uh, you just start off learning how to cook a few simple things. I, I really should have, if I had thought this through, um, I should have done like a corned beef episode, but, you know, had it uploaded, you know, a couple of weeks before... Um, uh, before St. Patrick's Day. Sorry, I realize I'm missing the gates. Get out of here. I mean, what I should do, really, I should just make a cooking video and see if people even like it. Well, honestly, that's something... See, I hate to take time away from working on what I'm working on this week for the show, but, boy, this week would sure be the perfect time to do it since I'm home by myself all week. I don't know, I'll think about it.
Oh yeah, Salisbury steak. A couple people told me I need to um, I need to do a Salisbury steak episode. And then Josh says I love to cook. Uh, I would love to a good corned beef hash recipe to go with eggs. Yeah, I mean that's usually like right now I'm not eating potatoes, but uh, that's usually something I'll do with leftover corned beef is uh, is make corned beef hash, which um, what are all these kids doing on the slope? Um, which is another thing, honestly, corned beef hash is really easy to make. I mean, it only has a few ingredients, really. I mean, it's like corned beef, potatoes, bell peppers, and uh, onions, and then, you know, slap some cheese, melted cheese on top. And a fried egg, obviously. Alright, things are, things are going downhill here. Probably not going to make it to the bottom. Oh. And game over. Dang it. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for the games for the evening. So I'm going to switch back here and uh, see what's going on here. Uh, oh, Rory cooks at the firehouse for 15 guys. Yeah, I would, I think it'd be fun to do that, actually. Um, I'm not really into the whole, uh, running into a burning building thing, but, um, you know, being in a firehouse, you know, a few days a week or something, hanging out with, uh, uh, hanging out with a bunch of other firefighters and, and cooking and whatnot, uh, that sounds pretty, that sounds like some good male bonding, um, in my opinion. Um, Alton Brown. Yeah, I like Alton Brown. In fact, I used Alton Brown's, um, eggnog recipe a couple years ago. It turned out really good. But, uh, I remember one time Alton Brown did this, uh, segment on his show about how to, uh, cook pasta, just, just store bought, you know, dry pasta. And he was saying how, uh, you know, don't put olive oil in the water cause it like coats the pasta and makes it waterproof. Like, I can understand where in your head that might seem like that's a thing that happens, but it, it doesn't. And so I don't know where he came up with that. Uh, growing up, uh, we always put olive oil in the water because it kept the pasta from sticking uh, to itself and to the sides of the pot. So I don't, like, I, that's always how I cook pasta. It always turned out great. So I, that was one of those things where I just didn't, I didn't really understand where he was coming up with that. Chili, yeah, I make chili. Um, I mean, I don't know how good my uh, I don't know how good my chili is, but um, but I do make it. Hey, Pedro's here. Hey, uh, you asked about this last week, so I got uh, I got both of your postcards, uh, Pedro. Uh, unfortunately, the the jerk face at the post office put the postage label over what you wrote, but I was able to uh, very carefully peel it off, so nothing got damaged. But um, I guess that's New York City postal workers for you. Yeah, no drinking, of course. Not on, not, uh, not at the firehouse. Yeah. Uh, opinion on boiling pasta with the salt in the water? Uh, I do it. the The downside to doing that is it lowers the boiling point of the water a little bit, so the water's not going to be as hot. But uh, the salt gets soaked up into the pasta, so that's why. So the two things, real quick, uh, when you when you're making pasta, these are the two keys: uh, oil and salt in the water, not too much salt, but it helps put some salt in the pasta. And then you want to cook the pasta until it's almost done, but not quite. Then drain the water, then put sauce in there and put the flame back under it so it cooks in the sauce a little bit because then it actually, the way it cooks the rest of the way is by sucking up some of the sauce juices. So that's perfect, um, just, you know, standard spaghetti. Sea salt, uh, it doesn't matter. I don't, you know, people use sea salt and Himalayan pink salt and kosher salt. Uh, it's just salt, man. Like, I don't, I don't really get into that whole salt thing. Like I buy kosher salt cause it's like a buck 
for uh for a huge box of it that lasts me like two years. So um Federico is that how do you pronounce it? Sulia? I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Sorry, you're from Italy. Well, uh supposedly you guys don't eat dried pasta over there, so um at least that's what I always hear is that you know Italian say so it's not real Italian food, which uh it is just uh only for uh, you know, late 18th century, early 19th century, uh, well, early 20th century, I guess, uh, poor rural Southern Italians. Um, anyway, yeah, al dente. Uh, okay, so um, I don't know. What else before I go? Uh, for anybody that just showed up, I'm not going to go through the whole spiel again. Uh, we got the Patreon page going now. Uh, the link's in the description. Uh, you can go check it out, and I explain... Uh, why I did it and what you get from it. So I'm not going to go over that again. Uh, unless somebody wants to convince me otherwise, I was going to do the uh, Mega SG next week as um, as the stream. We don't have to. Uh, I mean, it's going to be more Genesis. I mean, I just, I always like playing the Genesis. But uh, if, uh, you know, if you guys are getting sick of the Genesis, uh, we, can, we can play something else because I'm not really going to go over the... Um, uh, go over the features of the Mega SG too terribly much, just because, like I said, there's already a lot of videos out there um, on that. Uh, I like Anne Berlin a lot, says that the store is back up, so that's nice. Uh, if you go to uh, cgquarterly.com slash, uh, slash shop CGQ, again, the link is in the description. Uh, I've got some new stuff up in the shop, and and now there's just more flexibility to um, how you can buy stuff. Like basically you can buy whatever you want in whatever quantities you want. And it's just a flat two bucks to ship any of it. So uh, so yeah, that's all I have to say about uh, about that kind of stuff. So uh, someone said, Chris Vanderhoff says Vectrex. I don't actually have a Vectrex, but the, I also don't see how we would stream that. So, um, and Josh says, if you're getting sick of the Genesis, then you can get out. That's what I say. But I would have to think about what games we would play. Oh, Rory says Rambo 3. Dude, I love Rambo 3. We could totally play that. Um, assuming that I do the Mega SG next week, which I'm sure I will, just remind me and we'll play some Rambo 3. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. Uh, well, we already did the Sega CD, but we'll do it again sometime. And, uh, well, we could check out some SMS games um, on the uh, Mega SG, and that way we can see kind of how it... Uh, performs as far as that goes. So, uh, all right. Well, I think that makes this a good time to go ahead and, uh, and stop the stream. Uh, again, I can't believe two and a half hours went by so fast. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had fun checking out some black box games and, uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Don't forget if you're not, um, if you're not on the discord yet, you should, uh, you should check that out. Um, I don't know if Teresa has time to post the link one more time, but um, if not, you can just uh, scroll up in uh, in the chat box. I mean, she posted it several times. So uh, yeah, check out uh, check out Discord. Check out uh, yep, there it is right there. And uh, like I said, check out the links in the video description if you so choose. And uh, I will see you guys again uh, next Tuesday. So uh, everybody have a good night.